So our product is the Wix Substitution Tracker. Um, Ryan will be introducing this to you. So have you Hi everyone, my name is Ryan and we are the Wix subscription tracker team. So um, today we are going to be talking about our problem and solution, um, our product stack and features, what we've learned from making our product and also finally a demo and explanation of our product. So firstly, the problem and solution. So our problem is that the AI Camp's Wix subscription system is susceptible to exploitation, which leads to like unpaid invoices and product abuse. This forces employees to manually track malicious behavior, which loses company time that could have been better spent. So for example, the guided internship program, it's been exploited by customers. So what would they so what they would do is they would pay for the program and then cancel it after gaining access to materials such as the crash course. So this exploit has resulted up to thirty thousand dollars lost, which forces our chief operations officer Richard and developer Blake to manually contact potential fraudsters. So our solution to this problem? We have an automated system that stores Wix data for analysis. Um, we also have fraud reports that are delivered to our team weekly. We also will deliver valuable insights and actionable tasks, which includes emailing customers and resources for further analysis if deemed necessary. So secondly, our product. Um, this is our stack. So this is the stuff we've used in our product um, to make our product, which can be seen right here. So what makes our product? Well, it's maintainable and scalable with a number of features in place to make future development easier. It also has multiple security measures in place to ensure that <clears throat> private information remains private. It's also been thoroughly tested and has been accounted for extreme circumstances. So over the course of our 10 weeks in the guided internship, we've been able to learn about a lot. Um, so first up, we learned about how we can diagnose and squash bugs in our program. So on the diagnosing side of things, we learned about the importance of error logging. So basically what we did is we added um, error handling. And if anything went wrong, we would log the errors with descriptive information and save it to our database. So this allowed us to quickly um, locate the cause and uh, quickly apply fix to a bug. Another thing we learned about is how it can work as a team. Um, this came especially useful in the second and the final two weeks because we had to pivot our product entirely. So um, the biggest part is the sprint slash scrum system. So every week, we would meet, every week we would meet and we would reassess and realign our goals and determine everybody's roles for the next week. So I was actually able to implement this at um, another nonprofit organization that I work at for the tech team. And their efficiency shot up like three times and we were able to generate 1500 in um, revenue for them. So that just goes to show how useful the Sprint Slash Scrum system is. And finally, um, well, we learned about how we can write and the importance of industry level code. So this is probably my biggest takeaway from this project. So for the first eight weeks of our guided internship, we were now writing industry level code. Um, all of our code was in one file. It was very messy. There were no comments at all, no doc strings, no type of readmes, no documentation, nothing. And um, about two weeks ago, Michael came and he told us, hey, we need to fix this. And yeah, we learned that industry level code is actually very necessary. And we were able to implement it without too many hiccups. So it's finally time for our demo. Um, so before we start getting into our demo, I have to give a little bit of background, a little bit of context. So basically Ryan, my team member over here, his parents have failed to pay their invoices for the past like month almost. Um, and no matter what we do, they just, they never pay it. 
and I'll just I'll share my full screen now. So yeah, you can see what I'm talking about. You guys can automate this whole thing, huh? That's the that's mm -hmm. the whole. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we did is over the course of three weeks, um, we automatically emailed Bob, aka Ryan's dad, about his failure to pay these invoices. So here you can see the first email, um, basically saying. Hey, if you don't pay this within three weeks from the initial invoice due date, we will have no option but to consider suspending your student's access. And for some reason, Ryan's parents still did not pay it. So the second week, we once again sent him this email. Um, and we also gave them uh, what they can do next and some contact information so that they can contact. And then finally, the third time, this is the last kind of the last stick in the fire or last string, whatever you call it. Um, we tell them, Hey, if you don't get this in, um, we are gonna start considering removing Ryan from the program. So that's one side of our product, um, the automatic emailing, and the second. The email was written by AI, I assume. Huh? Yeah, the email itself was written by AI. Uh, no, we have templates and we just format them. Like who oh, wrote? Them? Oh, you mean the yeah AI wrote it yeah. Yeah, I wrote it right. So that was that was a great email, by the way. Yeah. So so how did this work? So so they just say um, based on someone who first pay, you track like subsequent ones. Is that correct? Yeah. So and then they just say yeah. they were, they just say they missed one. They they never pay, you know, in like forty days. And then then what's gonna happen? Um. Well, we send them the emails telling them and. I'll show you what happens right now, actually, how y'all can take action. What if they, what if they paid at the 40th day and then what happens? Or, or the sub subsequent emails will be sent? No, after they after they pay, no more emails will be sent. Okay, All right. Yeah. Um, so the way it works is every week we send um, a weekly report to both Michael and Richard and whoever else y'all decide to associate with this. Um, so we configure this to go every Saturday at um, 10 a.m. PST. But for the sake of this demo, I'll have to manually put it because it's obviously not that time. So you can run this command. It'll take a while to load. And it brings up some data So um, for this past week. So fraud detected this past week, one, which is fine, bad, Bob, because he failed to pay. Um, the email sent, uh, the total number of invo overdue invoices, the number of cancellations that took place in the store and invoices that went overdue this week. So you can go on, click on this button to take action. And you can query for students by the number of offenses that they made. Just query for students with two offenses or offenses above three. And again, it takes a little bit to load. And It'll bring up these all of our all of the people who have not paid their invoices. So in this case, it's Zia with two offenses, and Ryan with three offenses. So if we select Ryan here, okay, maybe maybe, maybe maybe use like slightly um, toned down language. It's not offense, you know. Just you know, missed like payment, you know. So no, I'm just joking. It's good. It's good. Yeah. What? Sure. Wait, what? Uh, I'm saying like it's not you know like it, like Ryan C had three offenses. Uh, that that sounds oh. pretty, pretty serious, right? It sounds like a violation of law, you know. Um, but yeah. this is literally you know like contractually you know did not fulfill it. So we can use some toned down language. But I was just joking. It's good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so it brings up a bunch of information, and you can use this information. To um, proceed with however you want to in punishing Ryan's dad. Oh, I mean, not punishing him. I'm using this language again, but just removing Ryan from the program. Yeah, what happened? Also see here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you also see here, Um, you can get their violated invoice. Oh, wait, I have to share the whole screen. You can get their violated invoice. Um, okay, also, Ryan 
mine's like not a criminal we did it, like so this is actually zia's invoice one of zia's invoices so we're just using zia's invoice for this example but if it was mine it would bring up a bunch of information regarding ryan's failure to pay um you can print it or download it as a pdf and finally you can click on action taken so let's just take action let's ban him from the ai camp server uh no 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 this isn't a real thing okay all right cool so okay yeah we ban him for not paying and then we click action taken what's that's our database now now you can stop pestering ryan's dad with emails stop pestering you about ryan and it'll also notify ryan's dad yeah hey dear bob i hope this message finds you well and yeah yes yeah. and no Fr frankly if we were, we're doing this for money we should charge you guys fifteen thousand dollars instead of one thousand five hundred dollars and we would pay Manasi, you know, also effective like 10 times better. That that's, yeah, if we're doing this for money. Yeah, we could see them. Yeah. Um, let me see the code because the last time why, why, you know, talk to you guys, it was just like, ah, oh, the code is just like a little bit messy. Um, it was very messy. Yeah. What about now? Is it still messy? Um, no. We haven't finished commenting all of that because we only have to. Let me see it. Yeah. Okay, so we have a just about here in this tracker. Um, I don't know. Looks oh wait, that's one. Looks app. So this is where all our code is. Um, it's app. very object or it's very object oriented. So these are um this is a class utility. So these are basically this is basically stuff that will be. No, stop talking. Just just scroll down. Just scroll down slowly. Oh, okay. Go. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop. Stop. Go up a little. Good, very good, very good. Okay, uh, hold on. What about unforeseeing error? What are you gonna do? Like in line 68 below. So you could have like, you're catching a little bit error, but what if you have some, you know, unexpected error? Um. So what we do is actually discord.py has um, a command you can do where basically if an error occurs with your discord bot, um, you can just send a message no matter what area it is. And also for this, we can, we, um, outside of this, we just wrap it around a full try. So no matter what goes wrong, it'll be yeah. handled. And yeah. actually all these errors are logged and they're saved to our database. So you can just see what went wrong for full error message. Yeah, you could also decide like what are the, I mean, first of all, this is way better than anything that I saw from student projects. This is awesome, right? But secondly, you can, you know, have the whole thing wrapped around by something, right? And you have to also think about what are the messages you can resurface it, you know, to the client, you know, like I'm saying the web client or Discord client so that people can see it, you know, because this is internal to anyway, right? So you can just resurface like pretty much like all the errors, right? And so people can see it, you know, that that's another option, but yeah, you know. Yeah, um, for this, we didn't resurface them. Um, yeah, I probably should have asked you, but we just basically gave them a generic message like, Hey, something went wrong with the program. Please contact the developer to view the logs and that yeah. kind of stuff.